Hello everyone, we'll be starting in just a couple moments. Just gonna check out the technology here and make sure everything's ready to go. We will be starting here in just a moment. If you're on, you can let me know with a thumbs up that you can hear me. All right, perfect. Thank you, Elliot, for checking in. <laughs> we'll be getting started here in just one more minute. Just one moment, we're gonna go ahead and jump in to Wednesday night prayer meeting. We'll be starting here in just a moment. I hope you guys are having a good night. Hey, Aaron. All right. It is close to 7 o'clock, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, welcome to Wednesday night prayer meeting. Hello there. Uh, thank you so much for joining me uh, this evening. This is prayer meeting number 57. It's hard to believe. And I'm thankful that you're here with me this evening. And again, my name is uh, Don, Pastor Don, uh, and I'm with Altoona First Southern Baptist Church, located at 903 North 4th Street in Juniata. And I invite you to visit our historic little church. It was built and brought here from the mountains in the uh, very, very late 1800s, early 1900s. And we sit nestled right there on the corner. And I just invite you to come and experience the warmth and the, and the faith and the love and the strength of Jesus in his house, Alton First and their Baptist Church. So um, if you're new to Wednesday night prayer meeting, each week I, I share a, a uh, short lesson from the word of God and then we pray together. It's as simple as that. And, and really, I'm here to challenge you, and I'm here to get you to, to think a little bit more biblically uh, midweek. And, you know, I just encourage you during this time, you know, I just pray that this moment, this time together is going to lift our hearts and our minds um, to the Lord and to seek his wisdom and understanding and guidance for our lives today. And we, we hope this time of prayer will bring you maybe comfort and hope and strength. And tonight's topic is, is, is one that requires that sort of thing. Um, tonight we're going to talk about loneliness. Yeah, we're going to talk about loneliness. So the first thing I encourage you to do is to turn with me in your Bible, if you have it ready. And this is the one I'm using today, using the uh, Holman Christian Standard. And turn with me to Psalm 23. That's Psalm 23. This is a, one of my favorites. Psalm 23. All right, I'm going to go ahead and read this. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing that I lack. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still quiet waters. He renews my life. He leads me along the right path for his name's sake. Even when I go through the darkest valley, I fear no danger, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Only goodness and faithful love will pursue me all of the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord as long as I live. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word today, Psalm 23. And as I do when we have church on Sundays, I always like to lead off our discussion, our, our, our message with a story, and, and this one is no different. And so tonight we're going to talk about loneliness, and you know, we all struggle with this. And um, there's a story 
At 7 p.m., Robert was in the kitchen. He was eating some leftovers. The family in the apartment next door was having dinner, too, and their laughter and their conversations cut through the silence of Robert's apartment. And he, you know, this is where he's lived since his wife had passed away, since his wife had died. And he'd learned to live with loneliness over the years. It's, it's, it's stabbing pain has become a dull ache. But tonight, the, the, the sight of the, of the bowl and, and the single pair of silverware on his table pierced him more deeply than normal. And before he went to bed that night, Robert read this verse, this, this psalm, Psalm 23. It's his favorite psalm. And the words that mattered most to him are only four syllables. You are with me. More than the shepherd's practical acts of care towards the sheep, it was his steadfast presence and loving gaze over every detail of the life of the sheep that gave Robert that sense of peace and that sense of comfort. So just knowing that someone is there, that someone is with us, brings great comfort into those lonely moments of our lives. And God promises his children that his love will always, his love will always be with us. And that he'll never leave us. He'll always love us and he'll never leave us. He is our father upstairs, right? When we feel alone, when we feel unseen, whether a quiet kitchen or at a bus stop, uh, going home from work, or even a crowded supermarket. You can know that the shepherd's gaze is always on us. He's always with us. And we can say, you are with me. All of us, all of us, I mean all of us, listening tonight, feel lonely from time to time, and perhaps because of ill health or a busy work schedule or uh, moving for a new job or a school, when that thing happens in your life, we find it hard to reach out to friends. And, you know, our, mar our mind starts to tell us things that we don't want to hear, that no one is interested in our, in our thoughts or our feelings. And we build this wall, this huge wall around our heart that let few people in. The more we withdraw, the worse this loneliness gets. And the loneliness, it feels terrible, right? Loneliness is one of the greatest problems facing everyone today, facing people today. And I'm going to talk about this on Sunday. This is going to be actually my sermon message, is we're really going to dive deep into loneliness and, and how to address it and how to deal with it. And, you know, it's the leading cause of suicide. I mean, that is now the third greatest killer of students in the United States. People feel various kinds of loneliness. One of the most common signs of loneliness, or, or types of loneliness, I should say, is that of solitude. Or there is loneliness of suffering. Many people experience loneliness in society, or there is this loneliness of sorrow, or guilt, or judgment. So there's all sorts of, of loneliness out there, and we all suffer them at different points of our lives. But it's, in, it's important to distinguish between loneliness and aloneness, right? Because believers are never truly alone, as I just shared with you. Yes, everyone feels isolated at some point, but, but God never intended for us to live disconnected from one another. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, the Lord God said, It is not good for a man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Right? Ever since creation, he planned for us to enjoy an intimate relationship with him, and with others. First, he established a personal relationship with Adam and then provided him with Eve. And note that order. 
Note that order right there. Intimacy with God, and then it then that proceeds. You have intimacy with anyone else. God's first. And in the absence of personal relationships with the Lord, loneliness prevails. And the, the only way to be connected to the Father is by trusting Jesus as your Savior. In John 14, John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And when we do that, we receive his presence. And then in John 14, verse 27, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, and do not be afraid. Do not let your heart be troubled, and do not be afraid, my friend. And that promise that he'll always be with us, we have two examples here in Matthew chapter 28, verse 30. In teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And then in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have, because God has, has said, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. As a believer, you are not alone. Tonight or any night. Believers are forever his children. And so we're never alone. And so all of us at, at times, all of us at times have loneliness. It, 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 some have even called it, like, when you have this loneliness for God, it's almost like this cosmic loneliness. And we don't know what it is, and we're searching. And, you know, you see that in society today. People are searching for something, and they don't know what it is. And it makes us restless. And you see, and you see man was made for God, and without God, he is lonely. But with Jesus, Jesus is knocking at the doors of our heart, right? He is knocking at the doors of our heart. And he's saying, I want to come in. So will you let him? Don't push him aside. You know, he doesn't push his way through the door. You have to open it. You have to go all in. You have to invite him in. And when we do that, he, be, he comes into our lives. He comes into our lives. And he is with us forever. All right, loneliness is not an easy thing. We all struggle with loneliness in one way or another. But if you have Jesus, you're never truly alone. And so, if you don't know him, if you don't have that personal relationship, if you've never gone on in, all in, for Jesus, I, I ask you, I ask you tonight to take these steps of faith. And I don't want you to be in hell. I don't want you to go to hell. I don't want you to be lonely. And Sunday, we're going to talk about the different types of loneliness. And we're going to talk about ways to deal with it. If you're listening tonight and, and you've never made a decision to follow Christ, I urge you to do that tonight. It's more than a simple prayer. It's the most important decision that you will ever make on this earth. Because we're all going to die. And you want to know where eternity is going to be. You want to be certain. You want to be with your loved ones. This is a big decision that you have to make. And you may not get another opportunity to make this decision. Our lives are short. This is our lives you know, all of our lives on earth, and then eternity, you can't even measure it. Eternity is huge. And so let's use this little bit of time to get right with God. We are not guaranteed another minute, another second, another breath. God provides all of that. And this decision will determine whether 
you will be in heaven or hell. I, 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 here is what you need to do. We're going to make this so you can do this right now. First, confess your sins and turn away from them. Don't let them be a stumbling block anymore. Don't let them be a burden anymore. Push those sins away. Turn away from those sins and turn your heart and your eyes and your mind to God. So confess your sins, turn away from your sins, and second, receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, putting your faith, everything, putting your entire life in his hands, all of the decisions in his hands. Ask him to come into your life. Go all in for Jesus. You can do that right now, and he promises to live in you and to transform your life. You will never be be alone. You will you will have a brand new life. You will have a new beginning. You will have this great happiness and joy and you will have this abundance like you've never seen in your life. You will have this wonderful personal relationship with Jesus. And so you may be thinking, Don, what do I got to do? What do I need to do to do this? How can I do this? I have so many burdens. I have so many pressures on me. I, I, I don't know how to do this. John 3.16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal, everlasting life. And certainly his love is is." Is one reason that the Father sent His Son to save us and sent Him to Calvary, to that cross, to save each and every one of us. He doesn't want us to be in hell. Hell wasn't made for us. Hell wasn't made for us. No one comes to the Father except through Jesus. And in Romans 10, Romans chapter 10, verse 9, if you confess with your mouth, Lord, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And then in Ephesians 2, chapters, or Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, for by the grace you have been, for by grace you have been given, you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not as a result of your works, so that no man may boast. Salvation is wrapped up in God's awesome love and power and not in our good works. We must admit that we are sinners and believe that Jesus is the only one who could forgive us and make us acceptable for God. So if you're ready to make that decision, and again, we're fighting this battle constantly. We're in this lonely arena, in, in, in the deeps, deeps, deeps of our heart, where the greatest battle is fought alone. And it's choosing between Jesus and the devil. Only you can make this decision. Your decision right now will decide where you'll be in 100 years. Here's what you can pray right now. Here's what you can pray right now, and I just... If you want to go all in, if you want to turn your entire life over to him, here's what you do. Are you ready? Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner and I need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins and rose from the dead. I want to turn from my sins and invite Jesus to come into my heart and into my life and take over my life. I want to trust and follow him as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you prayed this prayer right now, if you prayed this prayer right now, leave a message, send me a message. I'd like to know because we want to celebrate this moment. We want to celebrate this moment with you. And we encourage you to come to church this Sunday and let us know. Again, out to the First Southern Baptist Church. We'd love to have you there. And, you know, maybe you're listening tonight and you've been away from him for a while. You've maybe backslidden. You've, you've turned your back on him. You've jumped back into sin. Well, you know, it's not too late. You have an opportunity right now. You have an opportunity right this minute. He will never reject you. Time is so short. 
So it's time to get right with him. Don't miss out. Don't regret this moment. He will not reject you. So tonight, my friends, I ask that you get a pen or a pencil and a piece of paper. And we're going to pray for um, our church family and our friends, those who need prayer this evening, those who are really uh, dealing with a lot of things, a lot of burdens, a lot of trouble. And so I just ask that you join me right now. And I ask that you, I've got some notes here. Um, I ask that you write up, write these down. That way you can pray with me and then pray throughout every day for these folks because prayer is so powerful it's life-changing it really is so will you join me in prayer right now god thank you for jesus and the wonderful salvation that you've given us through him we are here right now under your care and protection we thank you for your loving kindness that never fails. Strengthen us and fill us up with your peace. We ask for your blessing tonight and we ask for the Holy Spirit to move as we pray and we share our many burdens. We come to you and we pray for our lost and our dying world. And we thank you for the direction and the assurance that you have given us, Lord. And Father, tonight we place our worries in your hands and we place our sick under your care and humbly ask that you would restore each to health again. Above all, grant us the grace to acknowledge your will and to know that whatever you do, you do for the love of us. We ask for you to pour out your love and comfort and peace and healing power for all of our church family and friends who are dealing with medical issues and sickness. You are the great physician, Lord. Give the doctors and the medical staff wisdom. Give them, give our sick and their families strength and ease and calm and hope as you work to mend them, Lord. And tonight I just lift up my friend Andrew Dixon, Lord. You know what he's fighting. You know what he's dealing with, Lord. You know the decisions that need to be made, Lord. I just ask that you are in that situation tonight and with him, Lord. Tonight, we also lift up Daryl. He had his heart transplant. He is home, Lord. Thank you for answered prayers. We just pray for continued healing as he is home now. We lift up Joe Stupio and Peggy for their health concerns. For Cookie Stefano, who's still recovering from surgery and has a follow-up this week, Lord, we just ask that, that you give the, the doctors wisdom, Lord. We just ask that you, that you keep her mind strong to do what she needs to do to get healthy again, Lord, and to, and to go down the right road. And Lord, I just lift up Scott Beck and his brothers, Dan Beck and Van Beck, who are starting chemotherapy, Lord. And Warren McGee for his severe back pain. And Lord, I also lift up Patty Hicks in prayer. She's also going through chemo and radiation. And we pray and we lift up Lorraine Slade, who's dealing with severe dementia. And Brenda Muckel, who is diagnosed with thyroid cancer. And, and Lord, we lift up Rose Morrow, who is who's still struggling with um, uh, falling recently, Lord, and healing of her leg and PT and everything that's going on, Lord. We just ask that you touch her body and that you be with her. And tonight, Lord, we also lift up those who are not sick, those who are members of our church family, who are friends of our church, Marcus Osmolinski, Lord. Uh, continue to, to, to work in him, Lord. And we also pray for the Rudisil family, John and Linda. And we also lift up the Joe Biddle family and Gary Teeter and the Teeter family and, and Tim and Mari Davis and their son, Jose, Lord. I, I just ask, Lord, that you, that you bless them with health. I know they're struggling with some health issues right now. And Lord, I just, I just ask that you be with my cousin Tina and her husband, Jose, and the kids and, and the Barry family, Ralph and Christine, Tyler, and all the kids, and, and 
Pastor Paul and Cindy Johnson and their family and, and their kids and grandkids. And Lord, there's a very important day coming up, April 17th, Lord. Um, and just ask you to be with April and, and Xander and that entire situation, Lord. You know what needs to happen there, Lord. And I know that you can perform this. I know that you can make great things happen here, Lord. Be with Aaron Bomeisel and her son, Daquan and we just pray for direction and wisdom and guidance and Lord bless her business. And tonight we lift up Peach and her family, Rosie and Jimmy and Marlene and Alexis and, and also her grandson Hazen. And Lord, we also lift up the King family. Brother Anthony English and his wife Polly, Vincent Muco and his wife Lillian, baby Lorenzo, Castro in Oakland. And I just lift them up too because Vincent's trying to work, but he's still struggling with being sick. And baby Lorenzo was sick this week, Lord. I just ask that you touched her bodies and healed them, Lord. And, and once again, we lift up the DiStefano family, Cookie, Liz, Robert, Dave, Bernice, the entire family, Lord. We lift them up to you. And Dave and Linda, and First Baptist Church of Seward, Pastor Rex, Pastor Rick Miller and his family, Heather and the kids. And, and Lord, we lift up the Conema Valley Baptist Association. We lift up Doug Pilot and, and also Zane, um, Pastor Zane. We lift him up to you, Lord. And Lawrence Rissler and his family and his business, Lord, we we, we, we lift him and his family up to you, Lord. And also tonight, Lord, I lift up my family. My wife, Angelina. My son, Elliot. We also lift up Becca and her entire family also in Texas. And Norma. We just ask that you provide comfort and peace. And Lord, you know, we're talking about loneliness this week. And, and, and Lord, we know that she's fighting this and she's dealing with this. Um... You know, she misses George very much, just like we all do, Lord, but she has that special relationship with him. And, Lord, she's dealing with life change and grief, and I just ask that you be with her, Lord, and that you wrap yourself around her. And we pray tonight for our fellow pastors in the community, our local uh, Baptist Association again, and BRN. Uh, that's Dave Ludwig, Ken Hunt, and the group there. And, and, Lord, we also pray for our community, and we pray for our uh, a community that needs to be on our knees, and, and we seek your help and blessing on it, Lord. Blair County struggles with so many issues, including poverty and drugs and violence and worldliness and sinfulness, and, and, and you know the many struggles that families face here locally, and we lift up our neighbors around the church, and we pray for their souls. We, we ask that you soften their hearts, and we pray for their salvation, and we pray for the kids in our community. And that they would be blessed by the presence of our church. And Lord, we pray for, uh, for the missionaries in the United States and around the world. Keep them safe with your hedge of protection. And pray for our nation. Pray for our government leaders and our military and those in harm's way. And keep them safe as they defend and protect. We are hungry for a spiritual awakening in our community and in our nation and in our world. And we need to abandon this woke culture and return our families to Jesus, our families to the Bible. And Lord, I pray tonight that you would continue the spiritual growth of our church family. And Lord, bring healing, peace, and lighten the burdens. And we, we want to draw nearer to you. We want to be near to you during our times of weakness and our times of pain. And sustain us with your grace that your hope and faith and courage will not fail. And we praise you, Lord, for all the prayers that you have answered tonight and in past prayer meetings and in past church services. And we love you and we give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So tonight, we talked a little bit about loneliness. It's something that we all struggle with and if you have something on your heart, if there's something that's that's being laid on your heart tonight, feel free to drop a message down below or you can send me a direct message. Or you can also write to us. If you want to see our ministry grow out to the First Southern Baptist Church, you could write us a letter. Provide a gift if you want. It's uh, 903 North 4th Street, Altoona, Pennsylvania, 16601. You can go to our website, a1sbc.org, as well. But more importantly, I invite you to church this Sunday. We start at 1045 for fellowship, 
for praise, for worship, and for learning. Learning about Jesus and that personal relationship that we can have together. And, and tonight I want to invite you, and, and you can invite a friend. You don't have to dress up. You come as you are. And of course we're going to have lots of snacks in the back. We have fruit. We have breakfast food, drinks, stuff like that. By breakfast food I mean like light snacks, that sort of thing. Donuts and pastries, stuff like that. Uh, orange juice, water, coffee. Um, 1045 this Sunday, 903 North 4th Street. I would love to meet you. I would love to learn about what the Lord has, has put on your heart. So thank you so much for listening tonight. I encourage you to keep praying. And if there are any other prayer requests that you may have for this week, please drop them below. Thank you so much for listening tonight, and may God bless you. Thank you.